Oh, there we go, kicking the door in again. I'm gonna say that one is unjustifiably entering a house, that kick in. They like kicking doors in. The facial expressions during any interview are huge. Body languages, what people are doing, what they're not doing. You can learn a lot from a person's non-verbal communication. Car chases are very dangerous. If that guy just tries to get away, really probably not taking into consideration what or who they may be hitting. Hey everybody, I'm back again. My name is Kevin Waller. I'm a retired special agent with the FBI, where I was also certified in defensive tactics and firearms as an instructor, as well as a SWAT operator. Today we're gonna check out LA Noir, and the mission is the red lipstick murder. Let's take a look. Just giving them the briefing there. So I'm sure casework back then was conducted a lot differently than it's conducted today, but that's pretty good. You know, you gotta know what you're getting into, so Today's typical briefing is not much different than that. FBI doesn't typically have partners. You're not assigned a partner, but you very rarely work alone. There are some instances where you may be solo, but for the majority of the time, you're gonna have a partner that's with you. Someone from your squad, somebody that works the case with you. Typically when an FBI does an interview, you have one person that may ask the questions and the other person may take the notes. And the reason the FBI does that is you don't wanna miss anything. So it's kind of hard to listen to someone talk, make eye contact with them and write at the same time. So that way all they have to do is listen and get everything down. I think it's very efficient. Yeah, probably back then it may have happened very similar to that where the press just runs up and talks to whatever agents or, or detectives may show up, but the FBI has a individual person who's responsible for corresponding with the press. You defer to your press representative. So again, much different back then than it is in today's time. Typically with today, if you show up to a crime scene, there are individuals who will process that scene. If you're one of the agents processing the scene, then you're definitely gonna have gloves on. You're not gonna touch anything with your bare hands to preserve that crime scene. You wanna be mindful of where you walk. You wanna contain that space so no one else can walk into your crime scene. Very similar to what probably most law enforcement agencies do today. But we probably wouldn't touch the body until the person who needed to physically examine that body was there and, and ready to manipulate the body however they needed to at that particular point. As far as any evidence associated with it, you want to document ev everything. One thing I do love about the FBI's process, it is so meticulous and so methodical. Every square inch is reviewed, photographed, the notes are taken on everything because if you're there looking at a scene, you may only sense certain things, but the camera mate will catch everything. Somebody's notes may catch everything. And quite frankly, your senses may be overwhelmed at the time. So pictures are great. Years ago, I went to a crime scene. I was a first office agent, a rookie agent. And we went to this scene where it was a body in the trunk of a car that had been in that trunk for about two weeks in hot temperatures. So if your senses are overloaded, you may be overly concentrating on what you're seeing, what you're smelling, things of that nature. So it's good to have other people there that are prepared to do whatever needs to be done, to take a picture. So now you can refer to all these pictures and all these notes and add them together to get a, a complete picture of, of your scene there. Smoke a little cigar. Yeah, so one thing I will say about this is you just kind of walk in and say, tell us, what you know. One of the biggest things that often gets overlooked is the rights of individuals. Every individual has rights and those rights should be, need to be uh, respected. So if you want to talk to somebody, you want information from someone, it's best to start out by asking for that information. They can very well say no. Now you could go through the legal process and do something that ensures that they'll give you that information. If you're going to walk up to them and ask for information, it's probably better come up with a little softer attitude about it. Build some rapport. How you doing? How's your day going? How's everything going? It's kind of quiet in here or it's busy in here. I'd like to talk to you about something, kind of build up to it versus just coming in. You don't want folks defensive. Defensive people guard information. So if it wasn't Jacob, then you probably let her out of here with the guy who killed her. How do you feel about that? Mr. Detective, that's really aggressive. I tried to get on the you know, 90 percent. I'm just, I know I'm just throwing out anecdotal numbers here, but I'm just going to say like 90, 95 percent of your interviews, especially with like an individual like this, are going to be non-confrontational. When you walk in, you want to, as I mentioned, you want to build rapport. You want that person to want to tell you information. Oh, wow. 
just kick that door right open. That brings up another point. And when you talk about rights of individuals, an individual's domicile also has protection. Now there are all types of nuances. If you saw the glass being broken out, you could probably articulate that you thought someone's life was in danger, but you better be able to articulate why you're going into a home without either being invited into that home or having a search warrant to go into that home. Especially if you kick a door open. People have rights. You can't just kick a door in and just go in because you want to. Oh, there we go kicking the door in again. I'm gonna say that one is <laughs> is unjustifiably entering a house, that kick in. They like kicking doors in, but you're going to arrest somebody or you're going to, to, to interview. I don't even know if they're, you know, they interview them or arrest them probably not gonna be kicking the door in. It's a violation. Also a violation without a search warrant. <laughs> you know where she went, Jacob. You're lying. Why this interview is confrontational right off the bat. Again, I'm always, I'm, I mentioned people's rights before. One of the biggest things is you often hear the right to remain silent. You have the right to remain silent. Like this guy's not under arrest, obviously. So he could have not opened the door or said, I want y'all to leave right now. Even if they said you're under arrest, then you have the right to have an attorney present or the right to talk or the right not to talk. So unfortunately, a lot of people don't know their rights, but you should know your rights because you're protected. You don't want to talk. You don't have to talk. If you're not under arrest, you can ask them to leave. If you're under arrest, then you have rights to have an attorney. You don't have to talk unless you have an attorney present. So everybody should know their rights. You should know if you have to open the door, if you don't have to open the door, if you have to talk, if you don't have to talk, everybody should know their rights. It's pretty sincere. Yeah, sincerity comes through in interviews. Like if a person is sincere, even the lay person can see that sincerity or not see it. I think this game does a pretty good job of trying to capture facial expressions. Like most games, when you're watching facial expressions, they're always lacking, but this one does a good job. And facial expressions during any interview are huge. Body languages, what people are doing, what they're not doing. You can learn a lot from a person's nonverbal communication. Verbal communication, nonverbal. Nonverbal, equally important. Just kick the door in. Boom. <laughs> don't bother knocking. Just kick the door in. No, don't kick the door in unless you want to catch a charge. Yeah, probably not a good idea to be touching stuff. First of all, you just you're down for breaking and entering. Now you're touching stuff inside. You don't have a search warrant. Those are the days, I guess. Not today. You're not doing that today. That's why the FBI has a physical fitness test right here. This is why you never know when you may have to run or fight. Yeah, I can't say I've ever been involved in a car chase. Car chases are very dangerous. If that guy just tries to get away, really probably not taking into consideration what or who they may be hitting. Law enforcement has to take that into consideration. So you have to, you know, maybe you get the license plate, back off, get him another day. But you don't want to put innocent lives at risk. If you talk to just about any local law enforcement officer, at some point in their career, they've more than likely chased somebody. Federal is a little bit different. The scenarios that put you in a situation where you have to chase someone, you just don't have as many. You're under arrest for the murder of Celine Henry. Quite interesting video, very nice. If you like videos such as that one, check out Gameology on Facebook and YouTube, and you can check me out at fedboost.com. Thanks for watching. Well, if it had any other prints on it, we know whose prints are now also on it. <laughs> I think I hit everything. Yeah.